Hi, so my name's David White. I'm a senior developer for Sky, uh, specifically working on the Sky Go website. Uh, I don't really do much ang uh, Ember in my day-to-day. -day <laughs> <laughs> in my day-to-day -day work, uh, because Sky Go is built with Angular. Uh, and I mostly, or for the past sort of three to four months, have literally just been working uh, on DevOps related tasks. Uh, it there? Cool, yeah, uh, so I'm into my sort of Ruby JavaScript. I'm really into my Ember. Uh, I use it on any personal projects. Uh, Scala and I'm really into my Rust as well. Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about Docker uh, and specifically using Docker and Docker Compose to build uh, fairly self-contained uh, development environments. It's something I've done for the SkyGo site uh, because we have a lot of components, a lot of mocked APIs. Uh, so it really helps to kind of build these sort of containerized uh, little mini applications, package them all up into a single Ubuntu server uh, just for development purposes. So Docker is Sorry, really nervous. <laughs> uh, so I think before we can talk about what Docker is, because it's this giant uh, tool built around a very simple concept, uh, which is a Linux container. And so a Linux container is uh, just an isolated uh, section of, it's, it's essentially, it's a virtual environment uh, whereas with a virtual machine, you've got a whole sort of, the machine is the environment. This, it's like a sort of change route, uh, but even more powerful than that, it's the ability to sort of be able to run, cha change the sort of base file system, essentially changing the base file system without changing any of the actual file system. Uh, so you could, spin up a Linux container, or spin up two Linux containers uh, on a Ubuntu server, you could completely wipe out the entire root of the one, and that state of that Linux container will remain like that. If you went into the second container, it would still be intact. And so it, even though it's changed in one, it hasn't technically changed in the other, and changes you do in the other will never be reflected in the this one. Uh, so, yeah, so what is Docker? So Docker is essentially an isolated container for your application. Uh, so if I had, as I'll show in a, in a short while, an Ember application, I could spin that up into its own single container. Uh, I could then spin up uh, my Rails application into a container next to it, even though they'd share the same underlying sort of operating system. Uh, they are completely separate of each other and they can technically only talk uh, through sort of host names uh, or ports. Uh, so I mean, the idea of Docker is to uh, be able to sort of create this environment where you just configure your application once. Uh, you can push that up to a remote repository uh, and pull it down so it's kind of a configure once uh, and run anywhere. Uh, and you can spin it up multiple times on the same machine uh, or sort of multiple times on many machines. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so I think one of the main benefits for me uh, in using this approach is it keeps my development environment as close to my production environment as possible. Uh, which you can do through a tool like VirtualBox with Vagrant, uh, but that would require spinning up multiple Vagrant machines, uh, which is a waste of resources on your sort of development machine. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's sort of a small amount of what Docker does. It does a hell of a lot more. It's a really, really bloated tool. And yeah, I wouldn't have time to go into everything 
uh, it does in a single presentation. Uh, so yeah, this is a really good image. Um, kind of shows you the difference. On the left, uh, you've got a standard sort of uh, virtual machine environment. Uh, and on the right, you've got uh, the Docker environment. Uh, so I think in this case, uh, the hypervisor uh, would be uh, your virtual machine manager, uh, so uh, VirtualBox or VMware, whatever you're choosing. Um, and yeah, there is essentially only one uh, OS. Uh, yeah, kind of sort of the Docker engine is running on, so uh, you don't have to have sort of multiple guest operat uh, operating systems installed, you can do everything uh, with one. Uh, so then we've got Docker files. So these are, these are what you would use to configure your application. Uh, so they're actually, it's a really simple API. Uh, you get sort of a from, run, add, work directory uh, command. So from would be saying what you want your Docker file to inherit from. You could sort of pick any Docker for any Docker files from uh, the Docker Hub, uh, and then you can run your own commands. Then uh, within that, uh, set up your working directory, and then the command is generally the last thing you would run in your Docker file uh, for spinning up your application. Uh, I've got a small example. So this. I had to cut it down because it kept resizing the text. But essentially, this one would import a base image uh, from IOJS. Uh, we'd be able to run our NPM uh, it commands uh, to get Bower and Ember CLI. And then you could, there would be some more bits in the middle where you were setting up your working directory or setting up your Ember app completely from scratch. Um, and then you just run Ember server, and that will spin up that container uh, and run your Ember application. So then there's another tool uh, which Docker recently bought called Fig and renamed it to Docker Compose, uh, uh, which is what I've actually worked with uh, more so than uh, Docker just on its own. And it's a tool for orchestrating multiple applications. So whereas before you would uh, build each one individually, this gives you a tool for defining uh, the sort of structure of your application. So uh, pulling in various, uh, you could have your Redis server or your, um, your MySQL server. Uh, you'd have another section for your, uh, your application stack. So yeah, uh, this uh, Docker Compose file is just a simple YAML file. Uh, you'll get similar commands in your YAML file to that of your Docker file. Uh, and yeah, so that's another example there, uh, which I'll be going into a little more depth in a few minutes. Uh, so yeah, again, I've just named, named it web. Uh, you give it a build directory. if it's going to be built from a Docker file. So then that will just go into that file, look for a Docker file, and build that image out, uh, set up some port forwarding to your machine. Uh, and yeah, then any volumes and where you would like them to sit on the machine. Uh, again, I will go into a bit more detail in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, Macs and Windows can't actually run uh, Docker natively, so uh, one of the sort of most popular solutions seems to be this boot to Docker, um, which is really good. Uh, it's good for sort of playing around with Docker and Compose. Uh, it's next to useless for Ember applications. Uh, I don't know why there's something to do with the file system on this uh, boot to Docker. It just it doesn't handle uh, changes very well. Um, so if you run the ember serve command within that, uh, it'll appear to work, but you'll find that slowly but surely your memory on your machine is disappearing. 
and you can take up to sort of getting up towards a minute between you changing a file to that coming back through to live reload to actually show you that the file's changed or that it's built it and sort of pushed it back through. Um, so yeah, uh, my sort of preferred solution for getting around this is just to use Vagrant. Um, Vagrant's an awesome tool. Uh, there's a plugin for Docker Compose um, and there's so many images out there of Ubuntu, uh, which is what we use at Sky, uh, where you can just uh, have Docker pre-installed on that. And uh, yeah, just, just get that up and running sort of super quick. Cool. Uh, so. Cool. So I will try and make this file size a little bigger. Can anyone kind of see that? Cool. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So this is just a really simple um, sort of Docker Compose file for setting up uh, a very basic sort of Ember, Rails, and Postgres. Uh, sort of kind of a classic sort of Ember application. Uh, so this is just going to go off, this build command is going to go off into applications client. It's going to look for a Docker file, build that from there. I'm exposing ports 4200, uh, as you'll all be familiar with, but also 35729, uh, which will be the live reload uh, one and then what this is doing here is just uh, essentially sim linking my applications client uh, into a slash app on the Docker container. Um, and then similarly for the API, uh, which is a Rails based application, it's going to go off, look for a Docker file inside of that API folder. Uh, I've got the commands here, um, but they're also in the Docker file. Uh, technically, I don't need them here. Uh, it's good practice to anyway, because chances are your Docker file would be your production build of the actual uh, container. Whereas with this, uh, because it's more fig or compose is more of a developer environment tool and not really production ready yet, you kind of re-specify running things into a development mode within, within FIG. Uh, yep, just expose import 3000. Uh, this links, it's quite an interesting one. Uh, so because I've got DB. This YAML file is part of the FIG, isn't it? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, or Compose as it's now but. called. Um, so because I've got this DB image down here, so uh, and I've used image here, this is going to go off to the Docker Hub and pull the official Postgres 9.3 image for me. Uh, if you wanted the latest, you could literally just do that. I won't do that because it takes probably about 10 minutes to download and configure that, and I've already got a copy locally. Uh, it's just going to expose, yep, again, just exposing that onto 5432. Uh, only one port here because I don't, I don't need the port exposed on my local machine. Um, first, I don't think it'll work because I've also got Postgres on my local machine running. Uh, yep, and the same here uh, with volumes. Ah, sorry, so I was going to say, so this links, because I've got that DB down there, that is going to create a host name then on my API Docker container uh, so that in my Rails uh, database YAML file, I can literally just reference DB as the host name and it knows exactly where to go and pick <coughs> that up. Cool. And again, yep, volumes. So this time just specify on the AP and again to the slash app. So even though these will both be running on the same Ubuntu uh, image, 
uh, and both be running from slash app. They'll be completely self-contained. Uh, the Rails one won't be able to see the files of the Ember one, and vice versa. Uh, Does Fig allow for orchestration across machines as well, or is it just for configuring a single machine? Uh, so for orchestration across machines, I think they've got a tool called Swarm, Swarm. Uh, okay. which is for doing multiple machines. Like, yeah, Fig. So Fig was just sort of an open source project uh, started by some people who just wanted a way to configure uh, sort of more of a, an application structure over just an individual container. So yeah, uh, fairly simple Vagrant uh, setup. It's just going to use my VM box here, expose a port for me. And then we've just got this provisioner, which is Docker, Docker Compose, and run always. I've taken rebuild true off for this, because otherwise it's going to destroy the containers uh, and the links to those or the cached version of my uh, containers, which means it would have to re-download uh, a version of Postgres uh, and just sort of the IOJS uh, one and the, uh, the Ruby one. So we'll take a quick look then. Probably start with the Ember one. So Inside of here, I have a Docker file. So this is just a brand new install of uh, Ember CLI. The only difference is I've added this Docker file in here. Uh, so this is going to pull the IOJS uh, 2.0 image. Yep, fairly s explanatory, these two. Uh, yep, I'm going to create our slash app directory, add all the files from this into that app directory, set it as the working directory, and then install the Ember application. Uh, and again, this sort of Ember server command is in here, but it is just going to get overridden by the serve command within the Docker Compose file. Uh, David, can I ask, why, why is the Ember server invoked in command rather than uh, because it should be the last thing in the file that runs. Um, I don't know the exact the reasons. The so the command and the server at the bottom, I was, I was trying to figure out why it's, why it's not just another run line. Yeah. What? Run happens when it's you build the image, and yeah. happens when you execute the image. Yeah, okay. Every Docker file will end with a command, and only one of them. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. when you actually run the it's just yeah. it's curious that it's not like why why is it an array as well, not just a regular like shell command. Reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, okay. I've never understood that. It's. But the the idea, right, would be that, that all the other commands would just be you do that once. That would be kind of getting your machine ready. Uh, of which that first line is actually yes. a critical step. Is you know, most of the work's done for you. You pick an image, then you set it up the way you want it to set up, and then if that's cached, yep. and it's, you never do that again. Yeah. I've never actually used Docker in production, I might say. Uh, I've used Docker Compose mm -hmm. uh, in production, even though it says not to. Um, but that was literally just for setting up uh, our CI tools in Skygo, so because we wanted, uh, so we had a, a, a Go server, so that's the ThoughtWorks Go server, um, but we have multiple agents. Um, it just made sense just to have one image for the Go server, one image for the uh, the Go agent, and then we can just do scale on the agent, so we can bring up. I think we've got five agents running at the moment, but it's all sort of contained on a single. One thing I was going to ask in this, but if you want to defer the question to later, I'm totally fine with that. But the, you, you, met, you made this reference to the fact that, uh, this, or this distinction between testing and production. To me, one of the real promises that uh, a Docker holds is this ability to create 
a environment which mimics, you know, that your, your test environment is precisely the same, as, not precisely, yeah. but as close as possible to be the same. Right? Yeah. Um, so, but is that, if, what do you see as being different? I didn't really, you made a comment earlier which I didn't understand about, it would be different in production, you'd run it differently in production. Uh, that might have been uh, with regards to this command. I can't remember exactly what I said. Okay. I was shaking. <laughs> uh, so, try to think. Um, yeah. So this command is just going to override the command on the okay. actual Docker file. Uh, so in the Docker file, you would probably make that environment more production-like, uh, whether that's doing your minified minifying your assets or running it in production mode for a Rails application within your fig or compose file because it's a development environment you just override that and so you still build pretty much the same environment the command you're running the application with then right. is different right. um, cool. uh, so yeah probably worth uh, getting this thing running So inside of here now, I should be able to literally run the run tap. Yep. So it's all standard vagrant stuff. Probably worth just. a quick so the only other thing I would have done on here would have been yep so probably worth just noting that uh, that DB link that I set up uh, in the uh, compose file means in your host in your rails application you can just call DB uh, it just adds adds that to ECT hosts, which is quite handy. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's all red. That's good for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, one, two. Cool, so that's uh, the Ember application up and running. And yep, so we have our Rails application up and running. So yeah, uh, I think the benefit of this way over the boot to <coughs> Docker way is that I can literally, should be able to change a strange running properly. So you should be able to, talk. everything sort of sim linked in to the yeah. Vagrant box. Uh, so you should be able to do all your. And is virtual, is virtual, <coughs> virtual box used to be kind of slow in terms of uh, shared file system. That one of the big advantages that VMware had over it. Yeah, it's not as fast as doing it natively. Um, to be honest, I don't really notice a problem right. um, with our Angular app especially there doesn't seem to be 
Angular, keep it delay. Angular slow anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Did I decide to do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, so for some reason this isn't working there. Uh, this might be. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. How long do you think this will take? No time at all. <laughs> <laughs> It was working earlier when I was using it. I don't think I've changed anything. Anyway, uh, that was pretty much. Yeah, should we do some Q&A while the app works? Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, we got quite a bit of time, I reckon. <laughs> yes. So, um, <coughs> if you have two new developments like that, and you put your Postgres running inside of the Yes. The data will still be in there as long as you don't recreate. Uh, yeah, so Docker Compose, when you do an up in Docker Compose, it's different to an up in Docker in that it will recreate the image. Uh, so it's generally a no go. It'll destroy all the data. <coughs> um, but you can start a stopped container with just Docker Compose uh, start, and that'll bring up those containers. So. Yeah, I think this is still a recommendation, but there's the, the recommendation used to be that uh, you'd also have your state, you know, your database files or you know, storage would, would be its own Docker container separate from the actual yes. running instance. So they, they'd be linked up and it would allow you to bring down one version of the database, bring up another version of the database uh, against the same Docker image. But the Docker image that actually has the data doesn't have to be running. It could be Access through multiple yeah. Right. yeah, and you can symlink those as well, those right. images. Yeah. Right, you can have the volume to your data, so the volume to the data yeah. in the database will be on your local file system, so you can't just switch it over and stop it. Yeah. Well, I thought we couldn't do the shared folders. You can do multiple shared folders uh, in Compose. Yeah, Uh, yes. The main thing the container management for OSS is not. I mean, you use Vagrant just to get to Ubuntu or some sort of yeah. basic Unix yeah. version that fully supports. Oh, well, yeah, boot it off and go through uh, the um, extended running Docker. So, yeah, you've got that thing quite on the yeah. If it's in the same folder with your compose file, then it'll already be shared uh, from inside your compose. So, if you mapped the data folder that was inside, was inside the directory that had the compose, uh, that automatically gets shared because it'll be off slash vagrant inside the vagrant machine. And then the paths just seem to work out relative when it starts up. So it'll go into the machine startup Docker compose inside of vagrant, but inside of that inside of that folder. <coughs> so then they do map up. So um, as much as I want to see this working, I think <laughs> in order to get to the music, I'm yes. going to have to cut you off the applause right there. Cool.